and welcome to a new video. Today I'm here to talk to you about some female writers and some female-centric books that I think you all should read. Uh, so let's get started. As you probably know, on the 8th of March is International Women's Day and so I thought it would be interesting and relevant to talk to you about some amazing female writers that I think everyone should read. Please do join us. <laughs> Sorry, it's my dog. So let's start and I'm gonna go in chronological order because that will that way I think it will be more interesting. So the first one I want to mention to you is Mary Wollstonecraft. Now Mary Wollstonecraft was a writer um and a feminist from the 18th century, one of the first ones that you can think of in terms of what she wrote and what she advocated for. Um and this work is the, a vindication of the rights of women that she wrote in response to a, an article that a man, I can't remember the name now, wrote. And it basically it was a response saying how women, by being more, by having more freedom, could give more to the society. Uh, it's a very early part of the feminist, feminist movement. It's in the foundations of the movement. It's a very early work, though. This edition I bought at the... People's Museum, People's History Museum in Man Manchester and this is presented by Sheila Robotham and I mean every... S I'm, I, I, I've read parts of the of the Vindication of the Rights of Women and it's a fundamental work for anyone that's interested in feminism especially in the early feminists at their time they were revolutionaries and Mary Wollstonecraft especially she lived the, the life she wanted to leave, to leave she didn't marry, she had kids, she divorced, uh, then she got married, then she divorced and she was, when she died, um, her husband wrote her memories, William Goodwin and instead of doing good, it actually armed her because people just looked at his memories of her and said that she was like the worst example for women at the time about how to live their lives and and if you look at it now you, you find a revolutionary inside of her. It's very, very interesting and you should definitely know more about Mary Wollstonecraft. That being said, I'm gonna move on to her daughter. A lot of people don't actually know that, but um, I'm gonna move on to her daughter, the daughter of Mary Wollstonecraft and William Goodwin, which is Mary Shelley. Now, Mary Shelley has the surname, the first name of her mother and the surname of her husband, Percy Shelley, uh, a poet who, with whom she was married to. Uh, but Mary Shelley is more well known, I think, even than her husband because she basically invented science fiction. And the work I'm talking about, of course, is Frankenstein. Um, this is a fundamental piece of uh, English literature and literature in general since it basically starts the science fiction genre. Uh, it's also very interesting, since we are talking about female writers, it's very interesting to read books by women and kind of think about how, why and how this came from a woman's brain, I think, as well. Um, do check out Mary Shelley, and if you haven't read Frankenstein yet, please do. I'm gonna go to my next one, and now, some people will tell me that she wasn't a revolutionary and that she doesn't deserve to be listed among uh, feminists and some people c kind of think that she doesn't belong besides other female writers that were more progressive in their books but actually if you think about it she was a woman that didn't get married that devoted her life to her career which at the time it was basically failing as a woman and she just dealt with it. She knew that at the time to pursue the career she wanted she couldn't get married and she didn't. Uh, and of course I'm talking about my absolute favorite author in the world, Jane Austen. Uh, I could show you Pride and Prejudice but you know Pride and Prejudice already. And what I think is interesting about Emma for example and there are other works as well by her that are very interesting from, a, from the perspective of having a woman in the forefront and what kind of woman it has in the as its main protagonist. Emma is an unlikable character and Jane Austen knew that she was putting an unlikable woman in the front of this story. She knew that people wouldn't like Emma but she makes 
us feel for Emma. So we know that Emma is not the best person in the world, and yet we kind of cheer for her at the same time, which is amazing, and it's, it's just like props to Jane Austen, of course, for making that happen. Every single main character from Jane Austen has something that we can learn from it. There's something different about them, either being like Elizabeth's stubbornness and opinions. And Elliot, for example, is deemed too old to get married. Uh, and Emma <laughs> is just unlikable. It's also, uh, some people say, a most well-written novel, so that's why I also wanted to show it to you, and also because it's incredibly well-written, uh, and it's delightful in its social commentary as well. Next, I want to show you one of the books that kind of developed my love for the movement, for the feminist movement, for the... but not only that, also, you know, seeing... kind of starting to actually find feminist ideas and characters and inspiring women and authors and characters in books that are not necessarily recent, so for example Victorian um, books, and of course I'm talking about Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now, I would also point out that I do think that one day when I read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by her sister and Bronte, I will find her more out there with her ideas, and I do think, I've seen the adaptation and I think she might be more progressive. That being said, Jane Eyre, and this is a translated edition, uh, but I mean, read any of them. Uh, but this is a fantastic translated edition, by the way. It's from Presenza, if anyone from Portugal is watching. Jane Eyre, it's such an inspiring character. She's so determined and opinionated. Firmly believes in herself and in her dreams. And she doesn't quit. She doesn't give up. And she doesn't... Just because she's poor, she doesn't give up her dignity. And it's amazing. I find that incredibly powerful. I found very inspiring how, how strong Jane Eyre is, especially for the time, especially since, you know, her background and her status in life is not, like, high uh, and not that, well, off. I find it incredibly amazing how three sisters just gave up on any of society's expectation for them and just decided, ah, we're gonna write, and they, the three of them did, and they both, and they all became such amazing writers, and so important for uh, Victorian literature as well. Now we're gonna jump to the 20th century. I'm gonna mention someone that's kind of obvious, but I think you all should know, which is Virginia Woolf. And I'm showing you Mrs. Dalloway, but I could show you Orlando. I could show you A Room of One's Own, of course, which is less fiction and more um, in a dissertational style. Sorry about that. It's very bad weather right now in Portugal, so <laughs> it's th there's a storm outside and I'm trying to film. Um, Mrs. Dalloway is about this woman that has so many thoughts inside her head and doesn't express them. And how the life that she was meant to live has enclosed her, has trapped her inside of herself. That's, for me, what it is about. The story is all during one day, but she goes on and on about what her, her day, what her life has been. I thought the first time I knew I would have to read it, they would be boring. But actually, I discovered that Virginia Woolf's writing is so beautiful and rich and interesting that I had to... I, I, I There was no problem for me in reading this. So I would recommend 100% read any Virginia Woolf like, you need Virginia Woolf in your life, to be honest. Um, and yeah, uh, she she loved Jane Austen. She prefaced many, many books as well. Um, she mentioned, I know that in her writings, in a more like non-fiction writings, she mentions Mary Wollstonecraft, she mentions Jane Austen. So she, she appreciated those women and that's how a lot of people actually found them out as well at, at her, during her time. So yeah. And for a more recent author that's still alive and breathing, and let me just try to get more light here. Sorry I changed you, but I'm trying to get as much natural light I, as I can. So, for a more contemporary writer, I thought I would show you Isabel Allende. Now, Isabel Allende is a Chilean uh, writer. She's an incredible writer, so her most famous work was her first one which is The House of the Spirits, which was a movie. And I could show you both of them, to be honest, but all of her work is 
filled with powerful, interesting women. This one, however, it's not fiction. This is kind of memoir. This is the kind of memoir that she wrote when her daughter was in the hospital and she eventually died. And she writes about her family and about her life and it's so interesting and so well written as well and of course of course but uh, Isabel and is at at such a rich life and she was a journalist before becoming a, a writer um and she talks about that she also talks about um the government in Chile and what she went through because she was the from the, she was a, f a family member of Salvador Allende and yeah so She's very interesting and very, very, and a, an extremely good writer as well. So I would 100% suggest you read anything by her. But yeah, if you want to know more about her as a person, she has a couple of them now that are more non-fiction. So she has this one and I think she has at least another one that I also own. Um, but I really enjoyed reading Paula uh, when when I did. And I read it years and years ago and it's stuck. And it, it's... It has stuck with me and I remember it every day and it's amazing and it makes me love this author so much more. So that is all for me today guys. The sun has gone. I had plans to film another video but that's gonna be impossible now so yay. What are some of your favorite female writers or characters? Tell me in the comments below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you soon with a new video soon. Bye!